<clears throat> bring the meeting to order. This is our regular meeting, January first meeting of January from the Hartsdale City Council. Well, welcome everybody to a new year on the council and taking up the city's business. Uh, we will have an executive se se session, excuse me, pursuant to KRS 61-8101B deliberations on the future acquisition of sale of real property by a public agency when, a pu when publicity would likely affect the value of the property. We'll be going into executive session at the end of the meeting here. Uh, don't see any groups or individuals uh, to call on this evening, so we'll go to uh, we have a change order on the Town Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant Project. I ask Jessica, could you uh, bring us up to speed on that one? Yes, this is our now, by the way, should be our final balancing change order for the close of this project. Uh, we've kind of been holding on. We've known that we were going to need these uh, a change order for these two fittings, but we were just making sure that by the time we got to the end of the project, there weren't any other final items, and we ended up coming up with one other very, very small item. I think the total uh, value was $2,500 to make sure we pulled the right uh, wire uh, through to, to supply power to the new screens. So the existing wire in our conduit we thought was a certain type and it turned out it wasn't. So we just had to pull a new wire through an existing conduit at the screens. So the 36 inch fittings, there were actually two additional fittings that were not uh, included in the original project. And part of that is based upon the way the piping for this project lays. It's along the bank of the lagoon, like on the upper end. And those lagoons are curved and follow contours. And we were basing it off of uh, record drawings and uh, plans that we had. But once you start digging and laying, you realize that the existing pipe that was there was a more flexible pipe and it had a whole lot of curvature in it. And our ductile iron pipe is rigid and doesn't allow for that flexibility. So you only get about three degrees of deflection with each joint. So as you go with you know, several hundreds of feet of pipe, you, know, you get to the point where you're having to add a few extra fittings uh, than what that pipe could otherwise normally deflect. Uh, it's also as a result, which we already had the change order to move the 10 inch force main. Uh, we got that out of our way, but there were other points along the project we were able to work around it with the use of some of these, these bands, but it kind of was not consistently a set foot, footage away from this existing 36 inch pipe. So this is the close of that project. Um, with a change order of $12,846. The bulk of that, over 10,000 of that, was just for two fittings for that 36 inch pipe. And we've reviewed the quantities and the prices provided and everything looks, looks fair and agreeable to, to us and within our uh, contingency budget for the project. And you uh, say there's still this contract show they're going to be completed in February, is that still? Yes, that's still uh, on schedule. They're actually uh, should have power to the new micro screens Friday. We should be getting that startup. We've got um, startup supposedly happening, actually startup is supposed to happen Friday. It was originally going to be Thursday, but um, they're kind of working it out and getting it running and having training for our operators and maintenance personnel to make sure that we understand how to maintain the equipment uh, and operate the equipment moving forward. And then we are doing our final project walkthrough with the engineer, the contractor, and myself uh, next week on the 21st and addressing any final punch out and close out items. So we're on schedule to complete a little bit early, a little bit ahead of that final completion date. Does anyone else have any questions? Jessica on this change order number three. If not, I would ask for a motion to approve this change order number three on the county's budget for the plan. So moved, ma'am. 12,847. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second from the council of the uh, Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, we've got a number of COAs. I'll call on the uh, HRB summaries. I'll call on 
Audrey, our city attorney, to read these uh, summary recommendations. COA 19229, Bill Conway, applicant owner, requests to demolish a rear addition at 215 West Stephen Foster Avenue. Recommendation approval to demolish the proposed addition with the following conditions. Conditions, the demolition is approved with the condition that an addition with this design and size has to be approved before the demolition can take place. COA 19230, Jamie Haslam and Patrick Whelan, applicants, owners, request to add landscaping at 111 East John Fitch Avenue. Recommendation approval to install the proposed landscaping. COA 19219, Joe Buckman, applicant, Sherry Wilson, owner, request to add a door canopy at 212 West Broadway Street. Recommendation, approval to add the proposed door canopy with the following conditions. Conditions, that all planning and zoning requirements will be met before the canopies are constructed and any changes will be staff approved. COA 19220, Joe Buckman, applicant, Sherry Wilson, owner, request to add shutters at 212 West Broadway Street. Recommendation, approval to install the proposed shutters. COA 19221, Joe Buckman, applicant, Sherry Wilson, owner, request to install lighting at 212 West Broadway Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed lighting with the condition that any changes to the light fixtures would be staff approved. COA 19221, Joe Buckman, applicant, Jane O'Keefe, owner, request to add a door canopy at 214 West Broadway Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed door canopy. Conditions that all planning and zoning requirements will be met before the canopies are constructed and any changes will be staff approved. COA 19223, Joe Buckman, applicant, Jane O'Keefe, owner, request to add a pergola at 214 West Broadway Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed pergola. COA 19224, Joe Buckman, applicant, Jane O'Keefe, owner, request to add shutters at 214 West Broadway Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed shutters. COA 19225, Joe Buckman, applicant, Jane O'Keefe, owner, request to add, relocate lighting at 214 West Broadway Street. Recommendation approval to relocate the proposed lighting. Condition that any changes to the light fixtures would be staff approved. COA 19231, Demir Sarek, applicant, owner, request to paint the columns, posts, and door at 169 Mulberry Alley. Recommendation, approval to paint the columns, posts, and door with the following conditions. Conditions, the door color is the blue as submitted, or it could be white. Any other color would have to be staff approved. The columns around the door frame will be white. The area above the columns will be white. <coughs> and then other details will be black with gold trim as discussed and approved in the meeting. COA 19232, Demir Sarek, applicant owner, request to install new doors at 169 Mulberry Alley. Recommendation approval to install the proposed doors. COA 19233, Demir Sarek, applicant owner, request to keep the pergola alterations that were installed without HRB approval at 169 Mulberry Alley. Recommendation approval to keep the pergola with the following conditions. Conditions, support boards around the pergola will be removed and that the decorative pieces will be put back on the pergola to the same depth and width as what previously existed. The pergola will be restored looking as it was previously before the alterations were made. COA 19238, Demir Sarek, applicant, owner request to install outdoor table and chairs at 120 North 3rd Street, recommendation approval to install the proposed outdoor tables and chairs. COA 19239, Demir Sarek, applicant, owner request to install outdoor umbrellas at 120 North 3rd Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed umbrellas. COA 19240, Demir Sarek, applicant owner, request to install new doors at 120 North 3rd Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed doors with the following conditions. Conditions, that the doors would be staff approved and have no plastic on them. COA 19242, Demir Sarek, applicant owner, request to install outdoor heaters at 120 North 3rd Street. Recommendation approval to have outdoor heaters with the following conditions. Conditions, the heaters selected will be staff approved by Ms. Jennings and the heaters must be put away and out of sight at night and during non-business hours and during the summer months. COA 19243, Demir Sarek, applicant owner, request to install an outdoor oven at 120 North 3rd Street. Recommendation approval to install an outdoor oven with the following conditions. Conditions that the design of the outdoor oven will be brought back to the board for approval with the details. This includes color, measurements, the barrier design, and final location. COA 19244, Demir Sarek, applicant owner, request to paint and or replace the roof at 120 North 3rd Street. Recommendation approval to paint the roof and or replace the roof with the following conditions. Conditions. If the roof is to be replaced, it will be replaced with the NS100 profile as presented in the application with a matte finish. And if it is to be painted, it will be painted the dark bronze color, black, or dark red. The roof and details will be presented to the preservation coordinator for approval before the work begins. COA 19247, Demir Sarek, applicant owner, request, request to replace the back door at 118 North 3rd Street. 
recommendation approval to install the proposed door with the following conditions. Conditions, that the door would be staff approved and have no plastic on them. COA 19248, Demir Sarg, applicant owner request to install a new sign at 118 North 3rd Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed sign with the following conditions. Conditions, the sign is the same size as the front and the same color, but attached to the building in either location is approved as presented in the application. COA 19249, Demir Sarg, applicant owner request to pave the back patio area at 118 North 3rd Street. Recommendation approval to pave the proposed area. COA 19250, Demir Sarg, applicant owner request to install tables and chairs at the back patio area of the building at 118 North 3rd Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed tables and chairs. COA 19251, Demir Sarg, applicant owner request to install a new fence at the back of the building at 118 North 3rd Street. Recommendation approval to install the proposed fence with the following conditions. Conditions, the proposed fence will match exactly with the adjacent fences, including the height, style, design, color, and it will be the same in every way, and also that the gate will be non-mechanical gate. And that's all. Okay, I think we probably need to take up uh, the, the ones where Joe needs to recuse, Joe Butler needs to recuse himself. Let's do them first, and then we'll bring Joe, bring you back, and uh, okay. do the rest of them. Okay. So we'll be taking up uh, COA 19, 219, 220, 221, 222, 223, 224, and 225. So we need a motion then to approve those with conditions. So move, Mayor. And the motion there. Councilman Williams, is there a second? I'll second that, please. Second by Councilwoman Hart. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Councilman Buckley, back in. Okay, so it looks like now we will be taking up COA 19 229, 231, 30, 232, 233, 238, 239, 240, 242, 243, 247, 248, 249, and 250, and 251. Mayor, I think 230 is in there too. I don't know if you said that one or not. It's two at the beginning. 229 means oh, I, did, I, did. I think you said 232. I did miss two, okay. 230. Yeah. At 230, that list. Thank you. <coughs> Then I would ask for a motion then to approve those uh, COAs for the recommendation of the HRB with conditions. Make that motion. Right. Motion to Councilman Buckman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Doe. Is there any other discussion? Questions? I think there's been plenty of discussion on these. <laughs> you read them. You read the transcripts. <laughs> That's why they want to change their meat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a motion, a second. Uh, no further discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion is carried. Okay. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes of that special meeting, which was just on the electrical rates? December 17th. There's no changes or additions to approve them by unanimous consent. Okay. Um, we all just had an uh, electric committee meeting. We won't hit you up on making a report out on that, that right now. This is a full agenda. Yeah. I'll say that. So we'll give you a Two more weeks to okay. get that <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, and to the point we made earlier about the request to change the hours uh, of the Historic Review Board meetings, that we have a municipal order 2020-01. Um, that Roche is requesting that we move the meeting time from 6.30 to 6 p.m on the third Tuesday of the month. And that is because of uh, the amount of work and the amount of applications that they're having to cover in those meetings and trying to get them out of there in a, in a reasonable time. I think 
So I think sometimes these meetings are going at least three hours. Yeah. I think it's, I, I, I told Rache, I don't think, certainly none of her committee members would object to that. And I think people that have to come and make presentations probably would be happy to get out a little earlier. So uh, I would ask someone if they would, uh, well, I'll go ahead and ask Hawk if you'd read this municipal order, please. Municipal order number M2020-01. Whereas the starting time for the historical review board meeting held on the third Tuesday of each month at 6.30 p.m. is established by municipal order M2015-06. And whereas the mayor and the city council of Barton wish to change the starting time for the monthly historical review board meetings from 6.30 to 6 p.m. Now therefore be it ordered by the city council of the city of Bartstown, Commonwealth of Kentucky, that the historical review board of the city of Bartstown shall have regularly scheduled meetings on the third Tuesday of each month at 6 o'clock p.m in the Bartstown City Council Chambers located at 116 North 5th Street, Bartstown, Kentucky. And just for a point of order, I guess this would not go in place until February, if that, that, that or, it could, it or, can, or can it go be January? Let's see, when will, it, will they meet next week? Next week, the week third. We could, I guess, in our motion, make it effective in February so we don't cause confusion. I think that might be better because some people or custom of that being at that time so. so we could someone could i guess make that motion with it you know, with the uh, adding a clause that the effective date of the order will be february 1st and we can add that gary that language okay. before the mayor's time okay so um and ask for a motion then to approve this for order number m 2020-01 with the uh, additional stipulation that it would be go into effect february 1st 2020. I mean, I'd like to make the motion that we approve municipal order number M2020-01 and the necessary corrections or necessary additions that go into effect effective February 1st, 2020. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Sheckles. Is there a second? <coughs> second. Second by Councilman Williams. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. <coughs> All right, and uh, since like we're dealing with uh, planning, zoning, HRB, so we have uh, two planning commission reappointments uh, that uh, both of their terms expire next month. Crystal Hagen on the Joint City County Planning Commission, she's a city appointee for a four year term uh, starting next month. And Martin Carpenter, another city appointee on the Joint City County planning commission for a four-year term both of them are longtime members and have agreed to continue to serve so keep uh, some experience on that board so i would ask them for a motion to approve those two reappointments so i make a motion to approve those two reappointments and thank them for their continued service i know that's not an easy board to always be on yeah it's good that they both, <laughs> both uh, wanted to step back up I have a motion by Councilwoman Hart. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Dones. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All, all opposed? Those appointments are approved. Thank you. Do any other council members have any <coughs> comments or anything to present to the council this evening? Anything coming up? Well, Mayor, if you don't, if, if I may be in order, uh, on, the, on behalf of the, our Buttermilk Days Foundation Committee, but, uh, uh, I'd like to present this uh, flag of appreciation to the Barstown, uh, City of Barstown for their continued support of the our Buttermilk Days Festival each, each August and, and uh, hope we can have a, a lot of continued success with this uh, operation. After 25 years, it's, uh, it's been a long time. I'll pass it off to the Greg Ashford and he'll uh, put it where he puts the rest of them. But, uh, I want right, to thank all. <laughs> 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 well, I want to thank all the city and, and not just the city, but all the other members, the several other members here that uh, contribute uh, annually to the success of this operation that started out very small and now it's kind of got to be a, another part-time job. So, but anyway, it's it's the community enjoys it. It's been a it's been a fun field event for 25 years and hopefully uh, uh, 
uh, the members can continue to keep it on going for another 25 years. So. Well, we certainly appreciate it, and then uh, you know, you and your committee there, uh, you know, it's a, a wonderful uh, community event, and uh, I think all of us have participated in it in various ways over the years, uh, most of it eating. <laughs> but, uh, but it is a great, great uh, community event, and you know, you present money you raise that goes to scholarships for young students to help them further their education, which is a great, great thing to have that in our community. And um, it just, uh, it's, a, it's a great event. It brings a lot of people and then brings a little economic punch to the community oh, yeah. that weekend. With, uh, it brings a lot of people, and it brings a lot of people together too, community-wise. Uh, there's a lot of participation by a lot of local a lot of local, a lot of local people. That uh, it's, uh, it is a true kind of a homecoming type deal. Yeah, several families a lot of people, I know yeah. have homecomings and, and uh, they've been doing and, that for years. And we've just been thankful to have a lot of, of community support that uh, has made this made this operation work. It couldn't have, it couldn't have been happened without all the community support that so many people do uh, participate in. Well, we, we thank uh, you. We appreciate the recognition and uh, thank you. You pass it on to the. But no. gang, uh, our appreciation for all the hard work they've done and will continue to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council members have anything to say? I'll just go in. Uh, Casey, are you now? Should we welcome Casey? Casey, are you the official political beat writer now? Yeah, <laughs> uh, City Council. We'll start there. So. Well, well, <laughs> take it easy on. <laughs> we do. If you guys have got us on film, we do. <laughs> but welcome. Uh, we didn't know who was going to follow Randy's uh, footsteps, but uh, I know you do a lot of coverage around the community, so you'll, you'll do fine. And Matt and Jim have it recorded in case you've got any questions, you can always ask them. Let you, let you see it. So, thank you. Betty? Uh, yes. Uh, Kenny Powell and I have um, met and scheduled another meeting of the Drug Coalition that we're working on forming that's going to be at the end of this month. Um, so we're ready to, you know, get going on that again. We kind of put it on hold during the holidays. Over the holidays, um, thanks to the media and the word that we've gotten out about the coalition, I had a friend reach out to me who had a, another friend who had a child that was struggling, an adult child that was struggling, and because of the coverage we've gotten, they kind of knew who to reach out to. So um, I'm not, you know, equipped or skilled enough to handle it, but I could put them in touch with the right person. So we sat down and met, and they've made some strides in his uh, treatment recovery. Um, and then another young lady, the young lady that spoke at the meeting that Tom signed it, she has uh, reached out and she has formed uh, an Al-Anon for teens. Uh, and they met for the first time, I think it was last week, and she wants to join our coalition to have kind of a younger voice in the, uh, uh, on the subject. So I think that's been two great things that have happened already, but we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Do you know uh, the date and time or place of this next meeting? Uh, we're waiting on the place for them to get back with us, but it's uh, January the 30th. And we're going to always try to stick from 12 to 1 so that people can get in and out on their lunch hour. Okay. So we'll be, Kitty's going to be sending out another email with to everyone. So. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Betty. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah, Frank. Just got one one quick comment. Uh, uh, Saturday, my daughter's turning two. So, oh. for anybody who wants to brave Minnie Mouse ears and Peppa Pig, you guys are cordially invited. <laughs> <laughs> it's between one and four. So, if you guys are crazy enough to come, you're more than welcome. Cecilia might take you up on. But come on, <laughs> come on. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Well, we haven't met in a month, so it's uh, <laughs> a lot going so around here, I guess. So, I haven't met since last year. That's true. <laughs> About a month ago. Okay. Um, then I need a motion to go out of our. Well, did, we got one cemetery in Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. We need a Crystal Christy Harden one grave site. You approve that by unanimous consent. Okay. Then uh, I would need a motion then that we uh, go out of regular session and go into executive session pursuant to KRS 61 810. 
1B, deliberations on the future acquisition or sale of real property by a public agency, when publicity would be likely to affect the value of the property. So moved we'll move motion by Councilman Sheckles. Second. second by Councilman Hibbs. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we'll be going into executive session. We've had, um, we're back in regular session, first of all, and let the record show we took no official action while we were in the executive session, but uh, going back to really actually a little bit before September, we started in discussions about a piece of property in Barstow that uh, it's come to our attention would be available to the city to acquire. And so this makes this third meeting, executive session meeting we've had in, in regards to this track of property, which is located at 304 North 3rd Street. Basically, it's at the intersection of uh, 3rd and Broadway, uh, adjacent to the Mayor's Park. And uh, I think uh, we'd like to have a motion then to, uh, I'll let Audrey word the motion then. I think I'm, it's time for us to have a motion to make a decision on this piece of property that has been made available to us. So I think we would want a motion to authorize the mayor to enter into negotiations and take steps to purchase the property at 304 North 3rd Street from Simba, Simba, Properties. Simba Properties LLC. Okay. And, and also in that motion, uh, <coughs> we would do uh, take steps necessary due to do diligence in regards to a title search and also any environmental uh, questions that might be with that property since it was previously a uh, fuel station, gasoline station. Do I need to repeat all that? No. <laughs> so let's uh, make the motion, Mayor, to uh, allow you to enter into nego negotiations to purchase the real property uh, located at 304 North 3rd Street uh, with the stipulations you just mentioned as far as being able to enter into uh, research into uh, title searches and uh, environmental searches associated with the property and anything else. And take steps necessary to execute the purchase if so. And take those steps necessary to execute purchase as necessary. Okay. We have a motion by Councilman Nose. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sheckles. Is there any other discussion? Should we mention that we do have the funds in our land acquisition line item in our budget? Yeah, we'll, we'll be borrowing money. Or right. And I think the intent to use, uh, at least we know for sure that we plan to expand the park, uh, the mayor's park, uh, onto that property, creating more green space and, and a, a more of a highly landscaped area as part of our reason for the purchase. To enhance our view shed, you know, as we enter into the historic district area of town. So it's a good opportunity to do that. Okay, any other discussion? We have a motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion's carried. Thank you. All right, uh, if there's nothing else, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So we have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Motion by Councilman Williams, a second. Second. Second by Councilman Butler. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.